All right, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another uh, road reflection with daily videos that I'm going to be doing uh, till till the foreseeable future, <laughs> till I'm back on the road, uh, touring around the country. Um, thank you guys for tuning in, all the people that do regularly tune in. Um, thank you guys so much for uh, coming back and and um, and hanging out, um, uh, talking about some of these interesting subject matters, interesting topics that uh, that that we're going to be doing every day. Uh, if you're not familiar, we'll cover about three stories a day, or three three to four topics a day. Um, run through them, kind of go through my thoughts and. Uh, uh, it, leave a comment if you if you are uh, watching this. Uh, go ahead and if you leave a comment, I will I will respond to it. Um, I am trying to make sure that I am present uh, when I when I release these videos as a premiere, um, so that uh, we can chat about what's what's being discussed um, and uh, and and I'll be there to monitor the chats as well. So uh, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, give it a like, give it a share, tell some friends about this. Uh, and if you uh, are, uh, if you have the means to and are so inclined, um, feel free to donate to help out the show, to, to help out, uh, you know, kind of keeping me alive. Uh, <laughs> as, as I think we all need uh, some help, there, there is a way to financially help uh, this show to increase quality and quantity. Uh, ramen noodles comedy.com slash donate that's r-a-m-a-n noodles comedy.com slash donate uh, there are various different ways to become a sustaining member uh, monthly contributions as well as making a one-time uh, contribution as well uh, so various different ways to do that uh, at ramen noodles comedy.com slash donate. That's R A M A N noodles comedy.com slash donate. Um, had a bit of a spacey day yesterday, so I kind of was uh, just mostly laying out uh, very, very minimal work. So today I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to, to amp that up, um, get back to some normalcy, get back to some writing, get back to. To, to exercising um, and, and possibly taking a walk at some point as well, uh, just kind of around the block listening to music. That's uh, it's something that I uh, I really used to enjoy doing, and I and I haven't fully gotten the opportunity to to do that uh, uh, as often as I would like. So uh, I am taking the opportunity while there's nobody on the streets. <laughs> There is nobody out there, uh, so it's kind of great to uh, to just be out uh, by yourself, jamming out to some uh, to some great uh, to some great music. So, um, you know, hit me up with your music recommendations. Uh, you know, that's always appreciated. Anything new is always appreciated. Uh, I have a I have a playlist that I that I am currently using and and randomize and shuffle, and that's that's kind of fun. It shakes things up for me. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty pretty spacey yesterday, um, and uh, and so I'm I'm uh, feeling a lot better back in action. Uh, got a brand new notebook for road reflections. Uh, I've had this little guy for a while and never really knew uh, what to what to do with him. And I ran out of space in two different books uh, over the course of the last um, year and a half or, or so of doing these and. Uh, and we're we're finally at the at the little black book of ideas is what this is, uh, little black book ideas. <laughs> um, by the way, if you have a topic of discussion uh, that you would like me to talk about, would like to discuss, uh, please leave that in the comments sections as well. Um, and as a final point of check in. Um, I also want to say that the audio versions of these, I'm only going to be putting up the long versions um, and not the the segments that I that I release. I will be releasing segments, but they will only be available as videos um, on Facebook or YouTube. So make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure that you uh, you like the Facebook page and are getting notifications when I'm putting up new videos and stuff. So. Uh, sometimes they don't do that. So um, yeah, the the full 
top to bottom is is a version of it is going to be uploaded as an audio not the segments and that's partly because uh i am uh, running out of space <laughs> uh i've had to up up upgrade the um the upload limit uh quite quite a bit in order to uh in order to make sure that i am uh, i have enough space to put these episodes up um, so I will be, um, I, w- what I might end up doing too is going back and deleting some of the, uh, some of the segments that I've, that I've uploaded in there. Um, I'm still, uh, if, if you listen to it on like iTunes and Stitcher, it's still not uplo- uploading. Um, you can go back and listen to that episode about how Anchor.fm and Spotify, uh, censored me. I'm still facing issues and limitations from that censorship. And that was like three weeks ago. At this point, you know, I, I got to talk about it on uh, Ron Placone's show last week. Uh, Hardlands Media covered it. And I think I'm going to I'm going to talk about I'm, I'm going to try to see if other people are interested in covering a topic like this. Uh, but but who knows? I, I'm not uh, you know, uh, I, I don't really know. And it, and it, of course, it happened like right before all of the all of the shit went off. So uh, now Anchor is is basically like, hey, COVID-19, you know, we're we're in the same spot as everybody. So, um, yeah, I will be I the, the links to the audio versions are going to be posted on my social media feeds um, and, uh, and directly on my website, you can go and listen to audio versions of everything, but they are, uh, they are just not updating, um, fork full of noodles. So we're, we're still, we're still having issues, uh, with that. Um, so yeah, uh, the donations will help cover basically just my, my cost of living at this point. Um, you know, gas, food, survival stuff, uh, and then covering the costs of um, all of the things that I need in order to uh, upload thing, upload podcasts and videos. That's essentially what those donations are going to cover. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, so that's that's a little bit of a check in for you guys uh, today. So let's get into these stories. Uh, we're going to talk about how Congress is dealing with. Uh, the economic crisis, because there has been a lot of news, a lot of updates, a lot of changing things um, that has come through in terms of how Congress is handling um, dealing with the economic crisis that this uh, this this global pandemic has uh, has come about. So a lot of what I'm seeing and, and because, again, the pace of the news moves so darn quick. It moves so quickly that people kind of start forgetting what happened maybe a day ago, maybe two days ago, right? Um, that's sort of the way that uh, uh, that this stuff works. Um, and right now what's happening is there's a lot of playing partisan politics, right? If one party does something, the other party has to do the opposite of it. So we saw this uh, like immediately, like immediately – uh, when Trump said that he was just going to give sh- checks straight to the American people, right? Basically, his thing was, if you are an American citizen, you are going to get money. That's how they did it. And then the uh, the Dems came out and they were like, no, that's not what we need to do. What we need to do are give small business loans so that people can uh, pay their employees through these loans. And then they'll pay us back. And it was like, I don't know if that's what you need in a, cr- in, a in a financial crisis where your the entire economy, the real economy, not the economy that rich people run, the real economy is basically come to a standstill, right? Uh, and what do I mean by the real economy? Stuff that we do every day, stuff that average working class Americans go do every day, and and that's you know supporting your local mom and pop shop, supporting your local restaurants and businesses, going out to see live shows, live events, you know, taking part in educational services and childcare services, uh, making sure that your regular life is taken care of, right? So if you have, if you're somebody that uh, was able to afford a dog walker and now kind of has to look at that as a, as an expense that you can't afford anymore. Now, not only can't you, you know, now you have to handle walking your dog, but the person that was, kind of 
um, needed that income because you were paying them to walk your dog. The, the way that we kind of ran the economy of helping each other out, that's come to a complete halt and a standstill based on what we need to do in order to move past this pandemic, in order to figure out um, you know, what, who has it, who doesn't, how are we quarantining ourselves, how can we... So, so the Dems essentially blocked it with these loans that didn't make any goddamn sense. Like Chuck Schumer came out and said that last week, that what we need to do is, and then expand unemployment, right? So like, like people, uh, can, like more and more people are going into unemployment. Like they're just getting unemployed or, or they're trying to get unemployment at this point because they are unemployed, right? Like uh, but people in the service industry, the entertainment industry, a lot of people that are in part of the gig economy, uh, we've talked about this over and over again because it still remains to be a lingering reality and a lingering anxiety amongst average working class people because that's that's the elephant in the room. It's it's what we're it's what we're um, uh, constantly worried about in our society right now. So so they went to the loans and then and then so the Republicans went to the loans. And Mnuchin and everybody, they, they, they switched a lot of the language that they were talking. And now the Democrats are back blocking those measures by saying, well, it's not good enough. It's not helping the American worker enough. Right. And, and that's what they're doing. They're playing, this, they're playing this back and forth game constantly with us. So, like, the news constantly keeps changing. And we were, we, you're like, wait, what? Wasn't this not the thing you said yesterday? What? What's happening? Like you just kind of freak out because, because that's what they're doing. They're they're going back and forth. They're they're just, you know. They're kind of making it up as they go along, is what they're doing. Um, they're 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 saying even the even the stimulus package that like the Republicans changed their tune from sending checks directly to Americans to, uh, essentially basing it off of a 2018 tax filing. Um, so if you were too poor to pay taxes or file taxes, uh, then you just don't get anything or, or you get 600 bucks or something like that. And it's, and it's like the people, those are the people that need it the most. The ones that just don't make enough money to contribute. Like there's a ton of people that do that. A ton of people can't pay their taxes because they just didn't make enough money to do it, you know? And, and how are we going to help those people, you know, giving them the least amount of money, um, because they were, they were too, uh, underrepresented to fall into this tax bracket shit. Uh, so now that's come into play too, is how do we take care of people that, you know, aren't part of the tax system? You know, that's, that's coming to a question. How do we do that? And those are the people that need it the most and we're giving them the least. Um, so that's, that's how the Republicans kind of reshaped it once all this talk about loans started coming about and now it's like once that came about there was so much pushback about like why are you trying to give us loans but you just made up 1.5 trillion dollars for wall street and 51 billion dollars for the airline industry like why are you you know and then it, it was like there was all these corporate provisions and then the democrats had to posture and be like well that's not what we and and you know so now they came out and uh this is this is like the Pelosi plan or whatever it's being called. Um, it's a tell it's a ten to twelve week program that would include fifteen hundred dollars for individuals, seventy five hundred dollars for a family of five. Once again, um, looking at this provision, doesn't say whether it's going to be uh, monthly dur throughout the duration of this thing or just a one time payment that you're going to get. Right. And fifteen hundred dollars for an individual is great. It, it would uh, fuck. It would help me out a shit ton for sure. I'm not going to deny that. Um, but one, is it tax free? Two, are we going to have to pay it back? Three, how uh, what are you going to do if this thing goes longer than the next couple months? Like fifteen hundred dollars maybe is enough to get us through a month, maybe two months, maybe. Right. But like if you have zero income coming in, how are you supposed to make that shit work? You know, that's sort of the way um, that I'm looking at it is is sure. Seventy five hundred dollars for a family of five sounds really great. But what about somebody somebody that has more than a family of five? What about somebody that lives? You know, there are multi-generational homes um, 
you know, what are you considering? That there are some things that, you know, uh, come into question. Uh, this five hundred billion dollars in small business grants is what they're what they're also proposing. Uh, yeah, I think it should be a grant. Lo why are you giving people loans? And and again, all this is backtracking, right? Because Schumer and the Democrats last week wanted to give out small business loans. They were talking about loans last week, and now they're like, no, it has to be grants because we found out that people are r real mad about paying shit back when they're not making any money. So. Maybe we should grants forget. No, no, no. I ignore last week. Ignore last week. You know, don't worry about who was paying me to say uh, loans. Oh, it was those banks that we bailed out. The banks were telling us that we need to, we can't just give money to the American people. It's got to be loans, you know, because we got to run in a debt economy, you guys. Okay? The debt is very important. If If we are not... Uh, if if we are not indebted to the banks, then, you know, they might uh, disappear. And then we go back to a system where we all just take care of each other and and uh, and value each other for for who we are as people. And that's that is crazy. Oh, my God. What would we do with ATMs? Hmm? Did you think about the ATM market when you were trying to value yourself as a person? Hmm probably weren't it's selfish selfish valuing yourself as an individual valuing your neighbors as individuals and and uh cooperating and loving each other for our differences is selfish and you are not thinking about the bankers uh the democrats are also proposing 150 billion dollars to support hospitals uh, and eliminating uh, cost sharing for treatments. Um, so basically, they're advocating for free vaccines here, right? Which is some shit that we've been calling for since the very beginning of all this, right? Uh, free treatments, free vaccines, free testing. All this stuff should have been, that should have been uh, a day one provision. That should have been decided, signed, and done. Like March 11th people were kind of freaking out march 12th everybody freaked out march 13th we're going to do free testing and we're going to make sure that you have free vaccines none of this cost sharing copay bullshit where that should have been done immediately right and now they're bandwagoning and i'm going to get into uh, the uh, why the bandwagoning is happening in just about a, in just a, in just a minute here um you know, but I do want to talk about some of the more interesting things that are coming up uh, out of it. And all of it will, if you if you know me, I'm going to bring it around full circle. I'm going to do my best to do that. Uh, child care assistance, uh, because now, you know, um, people are dealing with their kids. <laughs> some Americans are like, yeah, I, I, I had a child and then I just didn't have to see it. Because I'd go to work and then I'd pick it up and put it to bed. And that's child rearing, right? I don't have kids. I'm 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 being I'm being a little facetious. I'm being a little facetious of the situation. Um, this I thought was interesting and I was wondering I'm, I'm I'd be curious to see how they how they make this work is six hundred dollars a week for anyone that's unemployed, uh, especially independent contractors. I mean, I'd fall under that category. A bunch of comedians and a bunch of gig economy workers, people that can't drive for Lyft or do DoorDash or, or the, the shopping apps and stuff, you know. Um, although I guess the shopping apps would be going up. They'd be increasing right now. Um, and I know some people are um, are, are doing these, these shopping apps or, or they're, they're being hired by grocery stores to do the shopping themselves and then um, deliver the, the stuff. Uh, I, yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot of those guys are independent contractors and they don't make that much money. Uh, I know because I've tried it and it's it's supplemental. Um, like I make when I did it, I made a little bit of money to help supplement some, you know, some buffer income, essentially. But that's really all it was. It wasn't like a source of any sort of, you know, major monetary change. Uh, it was just sort of a stopgap measure at best is sort of what it was. 
Um, so I'd be curious to see how they would implement something like 600 bucks a week for, uh, you know, displaced independent contractors that have, uh, that have lost a major, major source of income, um, you know, in, in however it is, uh, expand sick leave. Obviously uh, every corporation should have been expanding sick leave. And look, if you're a corporation, your CEO, your CFO, your CTO, whoever's on that fucking executive board uh, is probably making a shit ton of money. Uh, I think uh, in, in like 2015 or 2016, like um, the McDonald's CEO was making 450 some odd times that of the minimum wage worker. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pre let's, just, let's just say I'll do the math on it, right? I'll do the math on it. Um, you're making seven twenty five an hour, uh, and you work, yeah, let's just be honest. You're not working full time. So let's, let's say you're working 25 hours a week at seven twenty five an hour. Uh, that's $181 and 25 cents. I'll round up to say $182, right? And this is all before taxes per week. Uh, so 182 times 52 on a yearly basis, if you work 25 hours at a minimum wage job, you're making about 9,500 bucks. Okay, a little less than 9,500 bucks. So $9,500 times 450 is $4.3 billion. And you know they're not getting taxed on that shit. <laughs> $4.3 billion, and you just go out and get to keep it. And if you expand paid sick leave, you might lose, what, half a billion? You still have $3.8 billion. Like, that's so much fucking money. It's so crazy. Yes, and it, I think we should be expanding sick leave and if you're a fucking billionaire, you know, or a multimillionaire CEO of whatever, we just siphon that off of your income and you still have a shit ton of money. You're not hurting. You're not you're you're not struggling. You don't have to worry about what happens when this thing is over, right? Like like when we get back to normalcy, like am I going to be able to do all the things that I w was doing before? Like will I be able to afford will I still be able to afford rent? We'll, 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 am I out on the streets? You know, we're not really talking about moratoriums or anything right now. You're not worried about that as a CEO. Guarantee that shit. Okay, so then there's $4 million, at the, $4 billion, uh, sorry, $4 billion for elections. Um, uh, and I think that's just to pay people that are a part of the election program. Uh, again, very un unclear from the articles that I've read. Um, this is kind of cool. $20 billion for uh, the United States Postal Service for any lost revenue, and then they're forgiving the Postal Service debt. Uh, cool, because, I mean, the mail's still coming in. You still got to pay those employees for sure. They're probably A lot of them are probably working overtime. A lot of them are probably putting their, putting their lives at risk. People are freaking out right now. You know, so... Uh, be be cool to your postal workers right now, because they're they're still out there. They're still doing the job. They're still fucking fighting for shit. So, um, you know, uh, if if you're part of the American working class that's been displaced by all this, uh, you know, be good to your postal workers. If you know, don't 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 be rude. You know, if your dog's barking at your postal worker, you just chill that dog out. You kind of it's like you, you know, say put put that dog in the backyard for a little bit. Let let them work out that energy. You know, get get your postal worker a glass of water. Uh, you know, get get them get them maybe bake them a cookies. Ba maybe bake them some cookies or something. You know, treat them nice. They're they're going through a hard time too. So uh, we talked about the partisan politics aspect of it, right? Um, why are they doing this? Why are they why are they flip flopping? Why are they going back and forth? Right. We we had this whole thing of emergency UBI that Tulsi Gabbard uh, talked about in uh, on March twelfth or thirteenth, something along there. Um, you had Bernie Sanders coming up with with the uh, with a plan. By the way, all of this stuff is uh, is basically what Bernie was talking about um, in his 
point by point plan that's available on his website. So we're using, we're basically going to these outsider candidates that uh, all these corporate Democrats have like shit on for the last months, last like several months. They basically shit on them. Um, and, you know, we started with, with Tulsi and Bernie and, and basically using Andrew Yang's idea to come up with a plan um, of how we're going to take care of displaced workers and what we're going to do to ensure that once we come out of it, we can still have an economy uh, that functions without going into a major, major collapse, right? Uh, into a depression, not a recession, a depression, Um you know, because that's where we'll, we'll head if we don't if if we don't help out people, that's where we're going to head to. Right. But the reason why they keep going back and forth, you, you had the you had the uh, the measures from these outsider candidates. And then you also had um, you had Trump and Mnuchin coming out and being like, we're just going to send you guys checks. This where checks are coming out and then the blocks from the Democrats and then the blocks from the Republicans and blocks from the Democrats. So they just kept it going back and forth. And, con and and each time they did, it seemed like one side was conceding to the other side, right? Like they went from direct check, the Republicans went from direct check to loans after Schumer's talking about sending out small business loans um, because the banks that pay them uh, don't want to bail out the American people. They want to uh, bail themselves out. Uh, Here's the deal, guys. It's an election year. I mean, they're still trying to do this election. Uh, and it is, a, it is an election year. So what they want is to figure out which party is going to get the credit. That's what they're looking at, right? Who is going to get the credit to come out and say that they saved the American people and henceforth the American people owe the party? That's what they're trying to do. They, they want people to come out and say they, that, that uh, you owe us, as either Republicans or Democrats, for saving your ass. We did it. We did that. Hey, we did it. Who gave you guys all that money? Huh? Was it, was it, was it the Republicans or the Democrats? We, we don't know who fought for it. Who fought for it? Was it Mama Pelosi or M Mama Schumer? Mama Mitch? We fought for it, baby. That's what we did because we're good Democrats. We're good Republicans. That's what they're trying to do. But this is all shit that outsider political candidates have already called for. I, I, I don't give a shit what your personal opinions of Andrew Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, or Bernie Sanders is, but essentially without ideas that they, they have put on the table, we would have never gotten to this point where this is even being discussed. And guess what? Right now, it's... Mitch McConnell, uh, Schumer, and Nancy Pelosi that are going into some fucking smoke-filled room with their cigars and, and, and their fucking eyes wide shut party, and they're making decisions for the American people without actually being a part of the American people. They're not part of the American people. We are not at that negotiating table. The workers are not part of the negotiating table. The working class is not part of the negotiating table. It's a bunch of rich elites making rules to, to pretend to save us. And none of this stuff is going to be implemented after uh, all this shit is done. Bernie, Tulsi, and Yang had a plan for all this. Right. Like the UBI thing of like why we need it was all that was popularized by uh, Andrew Yang. Then you have Bernie Sanders, who's basically itemized what we need to do and how we need to go about doing it. Uh, a, a, an emergency UBI was put into place like the day after everything went uh, to DEF CON 5, like when everybody's freaking out. The day fucking after, man. In 1944, FDR proposed something called an Economic Bill of Rights, okay? Uh, Democrat, Democrat F FDR, Economic Bill of Rights, which included useful jobs, uh, useful and rem remunerative jobs. I probably butchered that word, but the key is he wanted useful jobs. That was our right. Our right to have jobs with meaning and purpose behind it. Uh, that was our right. 
Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, the right to earn enough to provide adequate food, clothing, and recreation. You think fifteen dollars an hour is is going to do that right now? Doubtful. I think that needs to go way up. That means th th it, what, what's being advocated for here um, is a living wage, is what he's talking about. A living wage, and you know you can have a federal living wage if you had. Um, I think I think a federal living wage should be above 20 bucks an hour at this point. But really, it's very difficult to make this argument of a federal living wage um, because just in terms of property prices alone, it's all different everywhere you go, right? If your living wage is, is let's say it's 22 bucks an, an hour is the living wage, right? Uh, we'll do math again. We're, this is a very math-centric episode. <laughs> uh, $22 an hour times 40 hours in a week is $880 per week. That's, that's without uh, with, uh, you know, pre-taxes. On a yearly basis, that's about $45,760. Uh, so if you say that a livable wage is $46,000 a year, um, or $22 an hour, then that means that everything has to be set um, within those parameters. And what do I mean by that? That means that somebody making $46,000 a year in San Francisco is not living um, with the with the the right to earn enough to provide adequate food, clothing, or recreation, compared to somebody in Billings, Montana. Billings, Montana. I mean, forty six thousand dollars. You might as well you might as well be the king of Billings, Montana. Maybe, right? You know, uh, but in San Francisco, you have just enough uh, just enough money um, to uh, uh, purchase a box. To live on, uh, on 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 the corner of a street in Mission, that you know that's that's what you can afford with forty six thousand dollars. So what would that mean is if you federalize the minimum wage with this, with the right to earn enough to provide adequate food, clothing, and recreation, as FDR suggested, that would mean that you would have a centralized um, focal point of what you can and can't charge for properties. That includes rent and mortgage. Right, so you would your property cannot go above a certain amount uh, based on this federal living wage. That means that a person that's making forty six thousand dollars should have enough money to 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 be able to pay their rent, their utilities, buy food, uh, and have some recreational money and have some money to spend. Um, or, or to save, rather. Uh, this is 1944, this guy's calling for it. So, so it really, it, it puts a restriction on how much money you can make, right? So, so that, you know, you can have a conversation surrounding that. Uh, here's more from the Economic Bill of Rights. Uh, the right to a decent home, the right to adequate health care, the right to education, all of this stuff um, is 1944 and uh, is considered far-left ideologies right now. Um, human rights is considered a far-left extreme ideology. Just think about that for a minute. If you advocate for human rights um, in any other terms outside economics... It's fine. Everybody says it's cool. You know, that's what we should do. That's what we need. You know, we should treat people better. And we should do. And then once you start bringing in economics into it and say that there is an economic component to achieving human rights, um, that's when people are like, well, this is an extreme ideology. This is, you know, veering into socialism. It's veering into these very dangerous territories but what we have in the Economic Bill of Rights is the basis for universal basic income. This is where we start. The ground floor is, uh, you know, useful jobs, 
the right to make enough money for food and for, um, you know, for, for all of these things um, that, uh, that, that, is, that is very, very important uh, that, you know, we need to live, we need health care, we need the right to an education, we need right to decent homes. That's your starting point right there for UBI. And we have the ways to make that stuff happen, right? We have the technological advancements that we can make uh, to make that sort of stuff happen. We can make UBI happen soon. We can take stock of what is what is available, the data that is available right now. Um, you know, And we can make a lot of technological strides. Automation is coming. We can do all that stuff. But what is the point of technological advancement if there isn't progressive foundations behind it? If the progressive ideas are not the foundation of technological advancements to make our lives better, then what good does it do? Now, Democrats in the 60s abandoned a lot of these ideas. Um, like especially like universal health care. They abandoned universal health care in the 60s uh, because they saw it wasn't necessary. You know, things were going really well. So let's get rid of this thing and switch it over and, and you know, like prop up, uh, prop up corporations, prop up these, uh, these other systems in place. And, and that fucking couldn't be further from the truth, right? Like just because things are going well doesn't mean you have to get rid of the systems that got us to the point where things are going well. How stupid is that idea? <laughs> it's it's a complete lack of foresight is really what it is, right? Um, because if we implement something during a crisis, uh, if we implement something during a really tough time that we're going through and it works and it pulls us out of that tough time, why not adapt it a little bit to keep what's in place so that when you go back through a tough time, you don't have to go into this emergency survival mode. If it works during a crisis, it's going to work at normal times too. And see, that's why the Democrats and the Republicans are so afraid to try some of these ideas uh, like universal health care, like universal basic income, like universal education, because if it works in a crisis, then it's going to work all the time. And people are, people are going to be uh, upset. When, when it doesn't, when, when it's not implemented, to be like, hey, what, the fuck, what are you talking about? It worked. It worked. We saw it working. Why would you take it away when it was working? What we can't say now is, is that capitalism is working because uh, it's not. Unfettered, unregulated, freedom capitalism is not fucking working. The American capitalist system and American hubris might be the cause of uh, human extinction. <laughs> that just that, that just might happen. <laughs> like us pounding our chest to like take credit for who saves humanity when it's just like no one gives a shit who saves. Just somebody fucking do it. We're we're doing everything that we can here, you know. On the ground level of of being nice to each other and compassionate, understanding, you know, talking to each other, checking in on each other. I have friends and that that I check in on, and people that check in on me, and it's very, you know, and we'll talk for a little bit. Like all of that stuff is great and it's amazing, and we're doing that on the ground floor. But at an at an eventual point, like we're gonna need field hospitals. We're gonna need some centralized versions of, um, you know how to deal with this thing. These economic bill of rights um, that FDR proposed, we have never come close to achieving any of them. We really haven't. Um, they, were, they were laughed at in the 40s. I mean, these are 60 plus year, ide 60 plus year old ideas. You know, and... Um, uh, even FDR was kind of laughed at and there was a lot of pushback towards him um, in all of this and we never came close to achieving what FDR was talking about. And now we have an opportunity um, to do that. 
because we need a fundamental shift. And the reason why we haven't had and uh, why we haven't done that is the Democrats and the Republicans are both the party of money. And that's all they are. Nancy Pelosi is part of the party of money. Chuck Schumer is part of the fa uh, uh, party of money. Mitch McConnell. They're all parts of. That's why I'm saying that nobody. We're, we're not. They're not advocating for workers. They're looking to make sure that they keep getting rich. Don't forget that the Democrats were advocating for the same small business loans that the Republicans are advocating for now. It's it, it's just they're beating their chest to be like, look at me. I'm the one. I'm the savior. I'm the golden God. I, I am. Uh, Americans need to worship me. Fear and profit is what they're all driven by. They're all driven by fear and profit. And it's evident in the way that they keep going back and forth instead of just saying, yeah, emergency UBI. Let's start with $1,000. Uh, let's make that happen. Let's put that initiative into play. If you're an American citizen, we're sending you a check for $1,000. No question of where this money is going to come from because we didn't ask that question when the banks were getting bailed out. Uh, 60 plus years ago, there was a guy that uh, advocated for an economic bill of rights. Uh, guess what? I think it's about damn time that we but that we start putting one into place, that, that we look at what FDR proposed as an economic bill of rights and put that into place. Uh, and this, this, this bill, the way that they're proposing it now, um, I mean, this is stuff we should have... I mean, I'm glad we're talking about it now, but this is stuff that should have been in place a long time ago. A long time ago. You know, it's so interesting that that ideas that I've, you know, I'm going to use myself as an example here is these ideas I've I've talked about for a long time, um, you know, and I'm not the only one. Uh, prog other progressives, other other activist-minded folks have been talking about universal basic income and uh, healthcare, education, uh, making them a public. Uh, utilities talking about pub making you know the internet as a as a public utility and and things of that sort is, um, you know, these ideas were laughed at. People people would make fun of me for believing this sort of stuff, and in the time of a crisis, they're like, "That's what we gotta do. That's what we gotta do. We gotta do all those socialist things." <laughs> so, it's very interesting to kind of see that. Uh, so. You know, I hope uh, I hope that this just chess beating, this uh, partisan play, this I need credit for saving the uh, saving the American worker, all that bullshit, all that ego driven nonsense, gets put over to the side, and we do uh, we do what FDR was talking about, and we put into place some progressive ideas that were introduced over sixty motherfucking years ago because it's about damn time all right uh let's move to the second i don't know if the second story is going to get me um in trouble or not <laughs> uh i don't know it, it i don't know if this is going to get this video like shut down and removed from all of the fucking platforms because it's dealing with a sensitive subject it's going to deal with a sensitive subject folks uh so a lot of um a lot of right wing news sources when you bring up um you know any sort of socialist ideology any sort of uh or, or even use that word in a sense um they're like well the nazis were socialists the Nazis were socialists, you know. What do you get? What are you gonna do about that, huh? Fucking, they were. So, that's what they were. There you go. Is that what you want? Do you hate Jews? There you go. Socialism is bad. Proved it. Nailed it. Arguments over. Just won it. Uh, yeah, it's all wrong. 
Uh, <laughs> end of video. No, kidding. Uh, so let's look at that, right? Uh, the, the Nazis were, was originally called the National Socialist German Worker Party. And what they did was uh, they substituted uh, the class war that Marx was describing uh, with the with the with the race war. They, they didn't look at uh, class struggles, but rather racial struggles, um, ethnocentric struggles. They replaced all of those things. So they basically said the German worker, um, the reason why they're going through all this hardship is because of the other is sort of what they did, right? Uh, it's because the Jews, the gypsies, the gays, the blacks, all these other groups, they were really causing the problem that, that, the, that the class... It's, it's not class war. It's an ethnocentric problem. It's a race problem. It's this. It's so, but really, it was a class problem. And, and class problems transcend um, all of these other... Because, because all of those problems funnel into a, a class problem, right? Like, uh, like the issue of race falls into class problems. The issue of uh, LGBTQ discrimination falls into a class problem. If you, if you have a shit ton of money you know, then it's not really that big of a deal. Like, you know, Nick Hanauer, who I, who I like very much, I, I like a lot of the things that he says, but he's a billionaire and he's gay. And I'm pretty sure like he, because he's a billionaire and because we have this religiosity around money in our society that he, there's, there's no problem for him to like, you know, get a seat at a restaurant or something. Um, same thing if it was like a super rich black person or something like that, right? They kind of like, they champion that, that sort of narrative, that very like mainstream money driven narrative. And, uh, and it, and there, and people are willing to, s to subvert their identity. But on, on this level, on a, on a working class level, uh, that's not the case because you do see cases where, um, there are, uh, people from the minority community, uh, black people, brown people, women, LGBTQ that, that have gone through, uh, discrimination. And the way that we fought back with that is by one call it saying that what they're doing is wrong, but also having, um, uh, legislation put into place. Like if you have to put a legislation into place that you can't, uh, not hire somebody or, or fire somebody based on their identity, uh, then yeah, it's, 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 it's a problem. Um, and, and this race war ideology that, that, uh, that the, the Nazis believed in, that Hitler was believing in too, is more aligned with, with what J. Edgar Hoover of the FBI believed in the sixties than it is with any socialist party, period. Like even the right wing socialist parties didn't believe this race war aspect of it. Uh, you know, so the reason why they did it, the re because it's an easy point of control. It's an easy point of control for them because um, after World War One, there was a lot of German soldiers, or not just ger German soldiers, but just German people that were suffering, and uniting them around a common enemy. The common enemy being the other, um, is was was it, br it builds up political fervor, and it and it brings everybody under one banner. Um, and it's easy for easier for, uh, you know, uh, any sort of authoritarian to to control you. So, you know, that's something that people should keep an eye out for when there is a call to go against the other um, during any sort of like economic crisis. So in this current moment, if 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 you hear politicians, if you hear any sort of leaders start making um, statements of blame to a specific group of people, yeah, don't fall for it. Stay on task. This is, you know, um, here's more proof. 1933, uh, they banned the Communist Party and the Social Democrats in Germany. And then they co-opted their titles to appear as if they were class centric. That's what they did. That's what they. That's what they wanted. To, they they co-opted the title. This was a, this was what the Nazis were. They would do. Um, you know, and they probably took the took the title uh, so that they could ally themselves with another uh, powerful leader, Russia, Stalin. Stalin was right there, and it's better to be allied with that guy at that time than it was to make him an enemy. And once once he was made the enemy, 
that was sort of the fall that started to decline, right? Like they, they were not able to push through into Russia. Uh, Hitler was also against trade unions. He wouldn't give, like, when, when the prince's homes and stuff, the German prince's homes and stuff were taken, uh, you know, take, taken over, the, he didn't give them back to the people in claims that, oh, it's too communist. Uh, the Night of the Long Knives, he killed pro-worker members of his own party. So these are not socialist ideologies. He just used he just used that term because he was perverting the thought. That's what they did. That was actually um, something that they specifically did. So uh, their symbol, the swastika, is is an is an Indian symbol um, turned on its axis to pervert its meaning. That was actually something that they said they were they did. Uh, the swastik is a Hindu symbol, and it's a Hindu symbol of uh, of of Ganesh. And, you know, it's supposed to. Uh, I think it's supposed to indicate l uh, literacy, knowledge, curiosity, and something else. There's four different parts to it, right? And so that so they tilted their nods axis and got rid of the four dots so that they can make the symbol their own, and they perverted the. Um, the symbol of Eastern knowledge, Eastern wisdom, essentially. And, and they did that shit on purpose. You know, they, they were looking at, at, at trying to strengthen their own brand by trying to use something familiar. They did that shit all the time. Um, and what, they're, what, they're, what they did with uh, the term socialism is, um, is no different than that. So, uh, yeah, if you're going to use that as your, as your excuse of, not supporting something that's labeled socialist, um, you're wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. Okay, our final story. I hope this is a fun way to kind of end today's video. Um, this is an article that's that's actually quite old. It's a it's an article from 2017. And, uh, and I, I remember reading it very briefly the summer of 2017, but I've had it saved for a long time to talk about. Um, and, you know, at this point, I thought this would be a fun way to discuss it. Uh, can, a, can a president be a robot? Can a robot be a president? Instead of the way that I phrased it first. Uh, can a president uh, robot? Can they, can they robot it out? Is it avail is that dance move <laughs> available to a president? Uh, can a robot be pre a president? That's uh, that's an interesting question. That's an interesting question, especially as we approach into the uh, into the era of AI. It's a very interesting question. Now, a lot of this is going to depend on um, how the AI, how the 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 robot is. Um, is programmed, right? And there's a lot of benefits that they that they talk about. There's limitations to the human brain right now um, because uh, because we have to we have to get over to things like ego and profit um, and keeping this meat suit alive and um, y you know there, there's a lot of things that are preventing the evolution of the brain. We need to stop thinking out of fear. That's a limitation that human beings have right now. Uh, we we let a very small portion of the of, of our brain control a vast majority of the decisions that we make. Um, you know, so uh, there are limitations to what the human brain can achieve because of all, all of the, uh, y you know, it, it, it has to fight the meat suit in a sense, is we are, I, I brought this up in the live stream the other day, is we are programmed for a lot of kindness and empathy. Um, that's actually like that. That is a beneficial trait to us. It's actually in there to help us survive. It's a it's a bi it's a deep rooted biological response, and yet we fight that deep rooted biological response by giving more into fear and more into exploitation, and and uh, and and veering our behaviors and decisions down that path, which I think is has limited and stunted the growth and evolution of our brain and what we're capable of. Right. Um, uh, a computer wouldn't have to do that, wouldn't have to, to deal with those limitations. Um, it can compute large amounts of data, various different types of data simultaneously all at once. 
Um, and one of the biggest things that they say is, well, uh, an AI or a robot can't be bought off. You can't buy off um, uh, an AI. But this is where my initial statement comes in. What is it programmed to do? That's going to be very important. What is it programmed to do? Now, if it's programmed to look at things in a, in a logical, um, altruistic manner of what is the best outcome for humanity, uh, you know, based on what data is available, great. I, I, I don't think we have to worry about it being influenced by money. But if you add a profit motive into its decision making that this is all dependent um, by the central focal point of profitability, of making money, then yeah, it can be bought off because its programming is written to be that way. So if you're going to make this work, you're going to have to make it a blank system, an algorithmic um, computation that is specifically built to look at problems in an objective manner without the lens of of profit motives of the stock exchange of wall street it's just what is best for the largest amount of people and that's what that's what it needs to look at right uh so another question that that they ask is uh algorithmic ai processes right can an ai be smarter than its own programming that would kind of subvert it so even if you program it for I, I believe that even if you program it for the the basis of profit motive, can it transcend that programming to say, well, this profit motive goes against survivability. It goes against uh, logic and altruism and all these other traits that that um, are necessary in making this thing work. Uh, can it subvert that? Some people say yes, and some people say that that's already happening. With with all of the the learning the, the learning AIs that we have in place, um, with with uh, predictive texts, with predictive algorithms of of social media and all of these other corporations of like recommended videos based on what you've already watched, like these these are learning programs. Um, so in in a sense, it might take a little while, but yeah, I think uh, eventually you can get a, an AI that surpasses its own programming. Right, which is very interesting, very cool. Um, there's this thing called metacognitive thinking. Uh, metacognitive thinking is creative thinking, essentially. It's adaptive thinking. Um, and basically, the, this goes into the notion of the singularity, is can you get to a point where an AI um, works as an AI, but you can't tell that it's an AI? Uh, you can't tell that it's 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 some sort of a robot or an android. You it it just it's functioning so well. It's got this cognitive thinking. It's got this creative element of thinking. It's this creative problem solving type stuff that it's doing. Um, so, you know, if it gets to that point, can the singularity be something positive? In a sense that it will legislate and dictate thoughts, plans, and ideas uh, without these sort of hindrances that are in the way, um, uh, very human hindrances, I think, you know. Um, now, people that come uh, that kind of oppose this idea came out and said, well, you can definitely put biases into programming, which is the initial statement that I made um, is what's in the programming of this AI, uh, and you can program biases into AI, and that's very evident in in, in the way that we're seeing Facebook and YouTube, uh, the way that they deal with their algorithms. They're picking out certain words. They're they're scanning through to hear certain ideas, um, and they can limit, restrict, or completely prohibit certain ideas from ever being expressed on their platform. Now, whether that's right or wrong is, is sort of not the debate that we're having. Um, it's the fact that can you put program by... Yes, you totally fucking can. Uh, 
you know, we just saw that last week when all this stuff was was in the beginning of it, where GoFundMe's virtual tip jars, articles about um, about the the virus were all getting knocked out. They were all being called um, uh, community going against community standards and spam. Um, Twitter was going to do the same thing. Uh, YouTube came out and basically said we have the right to our algorithm is going to decide. Um, you know uh, what? Uh, what content can be can be you know shown on our platform, and what content doesn't? We don't have humans regulating that stuff anymore. So this is just what it's going to be for a while. Um, and it's like, no, you programmed the algorithm to look for specific content and fucking knock it out, or or suppress it, or whatever. So we're already kind of seeing that. We're already seeing these biases in effect. Uh, and it's very real. So for people that are just, they're saying, well, it's not possible. It is. We've seen it. the The programming on computers is going to be is going to be very real. Like it's it's already happening. Uh, so in terms of in terms of this, until we can figure out how to create a completely unbiased algorithmic program uh, that is going to learn, um, that is going to make you know, metacognitive uh, decisions, some creative thought decisions, we're probably not ready for this yet. Now, can we have a human machine team up? Can we have some sort of uh, problem solving algorithmic uh, AI software that leaders in the world can use perhaps for a crisis that we're facing now? Would that would that be something that is recommended? And that would be an interesting thing to see, I think. That'd be a very interesting thing to see. Um, I don't know how well it would work because at the end of the day, it would it would fall into the decision of the human leader to follow through on what the um, AI is is telling them to do. So if if we're talking about someone that's ego driven and narcissistic that can't deal with um, a solution that was derived by a non-organic being, then I think we're going to fall into the same problems that that we're in now, right? Which is a bunch of chest chest thumping and I got to be the one that saves the human race, kind of bullshit that that no one really has time for. So, um, really, even if we do a human machine team up, it's going to it's going to relate on back to our own programming which is, can we get over the profit motives? Can we get over our own ego? Can we get over making decisions out of overwhelming fear and anxiety all the time? It's a good question to ask. Um, Now, the, the the concern with an AI... Let's, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go into a hypothetic reality for, for a minute if, if we can indulge ourselves in that reality. The, the concern there in this hypothetical reality would be that human emotions uh, would not be regarded as relevant in making a lot of these decisions, right? Um, if we get uh, an a AI with, with a strong um, algorithm in place uh, with no biases and this metacognitive thinking and we hit that singularity um, and we have this AI that is going to look at some of our uh, major problems, major systemic issues that we're seeing and it's going to look at it through this objective lens, through this creative thinking lens. I don't think it's going to regard emotionality as a major factor to play into all of this. It's going to look at what is the end result of each of these things. So if we're going to look at healthcare, that's more about taking care of sick people and preventative care. So it's going to come up with a plan based on available data uh, to say this is what we need to push forward with. And it might be a universal healthcare plan. It might not be, you know, um, but it'll it'll come up with something that is going to be uh, a plan that's rooted in taking care of sick people and preventative care. <clears throat> that's what it's going to be rooted in. Education will become about knowledge and curiosity. 
uh, so determining how people need to, to teach things and uh, what we are looking at education in the lens of um, will become knowledge and curiosity. Uh, policing. I think policing is probably going to be another subject matter that's going to be very different under President Robot. Uh, uh, President Android? Android would probably be the more accurate term. Uh, but policing would be about the varying degrees in how you uphold a law. Uh, so I bet a nonviolent offense or, or protest won't be criminalized because it, it would probably deem that illogical. It would probably deem that as, as, a, uh, as fundamentally a violation of freedom. Fund in, in, you know, maybe the law is more flexible about that sort of stuff and it won't be this corporal punishment aspect of things. Um, climate change would be about preservation of the planet. Uh, you know, a lot of these things are going to wind up having no financial motive. It, you know, if we can design a AI um, to to go about this, and uh, really, what I'm trying to say is, unless we program a financial incentive in, um, it if 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 we remove that, it just it becomes. It becomes more about the the altruistic way, the cooperative way that we need to take care of each other. We need to take care of the planet. Um, and we won't be having these sort of arguments back and forth about stimulus packages and shit like that. Uh, so really, I think the um, the the uh, the the entity that that might need to be president in 2020 to help us you know, kind of get through these problems is uh, Lieutenant Commander Data uh, from Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, and sure, I might be biased and everybody's probably going, Chris, we get it. You're watching Star Trek. We get it, buddy. Uh, but uh, but hear me out. I think Lieutenant Commander Data fits all of those things. He has a positronic brain. He's trying to understand human emotions, right? He gets he gets human emotions and he, uh, or at least he has an understanding of where these emotions uh, come from or, or at least a working understanding of them. Uh, and uh, he sees these problems. He makes various different computations all at the same time. Uh, he can come up with various different solutions and percentages of how well they're going to work and what we need to do. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm, saying, uh, I'm saying data 2020. Data 2020, that's what we need. We need that positronic brain in action, uh, and, uh, and I bet we'd be able to get all of these, uh, all these problems taken care of, uh, probably in like less than a week. So, so that's what I'm advocating for. <laughs> Data 2020. <laughs> yeah. That's what I want, baby. Uh, all right. That's going to be the end of our video. We made a little bit longer of a video today. Uh, than, uh, than we normally do, but that first topic was pretty big, and I thought we should cover it, because there's a lot of recapping that needs to be done in situations like this. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Uh, if you're not watching this as a premiere, um, feel free to leave a comment, because I'll probably respond uh, to, to that as well. Keep this community engaged. Do me a favor. A biggest thing that you can do uh, is sharing these videos. When you see them, share them out. Uh, t tell some friends about them. Um, right now, this is this is the primary way that I'm going to be able to keep uh, come you know de delivering what I can to you guys, talking about important issues and ideas, and uh, and and keeping up with material, um, or at least formulating ideas for material. I don't know, uh, but um, uh, and if you can, if you have the means to. Uh, feel free to donate. Uh, ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate. Um, live stand-up comedy shows are still kind of up in the air right now. I'm not sure when we're going to be uh, back in, in doing live events. Uh, it's, it, we're, we're kind of in murky territory in regards to that. Um, so, uh, hang tight. Hopefully we'll be back soon. Um, you know, uh, I know, I know it feels like it's been a very long time. <laughs> I definitely feel like it's been a very long time already. 
Um, I know it's only been like a week and a half or something like that since since everybody was like staying at home and all the gigs got canceled and everything, but it feels a lot longer. Um, but uh, stay good to each other. Uh, keep yourself focused. Yesterday I talked about some, some ways to kind of manage anxiety. Um, I'll probably talk about that a little bit more. I, and that's part of also the reason why I do check-ins at the top of the um, top of the episode, so you guys can kind of get an idea of like where I'm at. Um, so if you're in a similar space, or if you are, or if you were in that space or something, you know, like leave a comment, ch- to talk. To that that's that's a huge way to kind of do this. Um, I have also thought about doing these uh, just straight live instead of doing them as premieres. Uh, I am not sure if I want to do daily live streams. I'm thinking about it. I might go directly to it at some point. Um, What do you guys think? If you have thoughts, comment. Be interactive. That's, That's a huge way to fucking help each other right now. Uh, stay focused, uh, find your, find your center, you know, that, that thing that gives you a core amount of balance between, um, keeping yourself distracted with something on, on the Netflix, listening to your music, keeping your, your own mental health, um, in check, um, you know, and, uh, your own physical health in check as well. That's part of the reason why, um, I'm, I'm doing as much of, uh, exercising and stuff like that. Uh, going for some of these walks and uh, kind of just keeping my mental health at a at a at a solid uh, solid space there, um, and hopefully I will have some larger written pieces out for you guys to share as well. Uh, yeah, the it, it's it's only minorly daunting because I I feel very overwhelmed about all of the things I do want to talk about, but I think taking it one step at a time and approaching it that way might help me kind of organize my thoughts about some of these topics a little bit more um, and bring them to you guys in a, uh, I think in the capacity that that I need to talk about them in a respectful capacity, especially because some of these ideas are pretty large ideas that kind of filter into other topics as well. Um, So, uh, so yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it for today's video. (laughs) Uh, once again, uh, like, subscribe, share, and if you have the means to, uh, if, if you would like to contribute to the show financially, um, you can by becoming a sustaining member or making a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate. And to all the people that have already donated, that, that have already uh, become sustaining members, uh, thank you guys so much. It, I really, really appreciate it. It really, really means a lot um, that you guys are are are, are doing that um, and getting the word out. I, it 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 helps me um, more than more than you can imagine. Uh, even even the shares. Like I really appreciate whenever the thing is like this. So and so has shared the, the post. It's like it means a whole lot. It means that you guys are paying attention. Um, it means that you guys give a shit about what we're talking about here. Um, and hopefully we can um, we can come together and get through this thing uh, together. Keep ourselves intellectually stimulated. Keep our critical thinking caps on. Um, that's sort of also another point of why I keep doing this this stuff is so that we can have these discussions. Because uh, I think right now it's so important that we that we critically think that we um, look at the world through the lens of compassion and understanding um, and and doing what we can for each other uh so be good stay safe stay well until tomorrow we'll see you on the road